Before we start with today's video, uh, where I tell you how to live your life, let's just look and appreciate how beautiful and sunny was today's morning in Stockholm. Disclaimer. I get quite intense when I talk about things that I care about, so if I sound a bit patronizing, angry or anything like that, sorry. It's just because I care. Okay, uh, now let's jump into this video. How do I look? Okay. A bit of story time first and I will take a look at my notes here because I don't have a teleprompter as all the other YouTubers, but uh, my background is in uh, agencies, digital agencies, where I was working as a digital designer, uh, working with creative direction, branding, web design, and all of this stuff that for me was very fun because I love visual design and I love to experiment with different type of forms and I felt that I can grow a lot and I was growing a lot um, and I've been doing this for a few years and I felt um, that my work is meaningless, um, that I don't have control over quality of things that I am doing because in agencies your projects change every few weeks and then you don't have any control what's going to happen next with it. Uh, it just reminds me a bit of like, you know, fast fashion uh, industry and that wasn't something that I was keen to work on anymore. So I found product design uh, and that sounds amazing at the beginning. I was working on products that I cared about. Um, I was delivering amazing products, right? Well, have you heard about MVP? A minimum valuable product. It's something that you make uh, to build a feature fast with minimum effort and when you validate that it's needed, you made it amazing but you don't, you just leave it there and no one ever looks at that anymore. Yeah, that's, that's how it works. <laughs> but what is product design? Product design? Product design work is basically joining planning meetings for planning meetings, working with designers who don't know how to uh, finalize the design process because they have no clue what visual design is and they think it's fine. Uh, well, I'm, I'm ranting here, but um, yeah, uh, that's, that's what product design is. And I think you know where I'm getting uh, there. It's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to connect my agency work with my product work and make something that is beautiful but also functional and it doesn't have to be this or that and that's what I am trying to do. I'm trying to bridge uh, the gap between branding and user interfaces in my work and for past few years I work as an independent uh, digital slash product designer and I think I found a way at least for myself to connect the agency work with product work and in this video I want to share a few points that make it work for me. Choose your clients wisely and I'm not gonna lie here uh, it's probably the hardest part. Um, I mean, it's it depends on your experience. I can afford to do that, uh, but I, I am aware that I'm a bit privileged uh, or like I earned this place uh, with like, you know, years of experience. But what I mean by choosing your clients uh, is that 
you should choose a client that understands the importance of design in their product. And if they don't, they are at least willing to learn and trust you. Uh, and they want to explore this part. Um, I am not interested in working with clients that want to produce a uh, cheap and shitty product. So that's it. No matter what size of a project I'm working on, I'm always trying my best to build the best visual and non-visual experience that I can. And by that I mean that I want to inject brand in the screens that I'm producing. Um, no matter how like repetitive the task can be, but by repetitive I mean, well, if you are designing a sign-up flow, which many apps have, there is always a way of making it more branded, more fun for your users. And you don't have to just copy paste solution that some other company did. You can play around with micro animations, um, micro interactions. Um, you can make it more fun for yourself and build this excitement for yourself. This is very important for me and keeps me going. When I tell people that I am super passionate about design system, they look kind of surprised because they found design system super UX heavy and boring. <laughs> or uh, they think that I will find them boring because I like as well visual design. And well, if you are building a design system that is repetitive and you don't put any brand part into that, then yeah, it is boring. It's basically, you know, doing the same thing that any other company did without even thinking about it. And if I think about design system, for me, this is the easiest way, like core thing where you can inject brand and make product creative and fun because every interface is built from those elements, right? So colors, typography, but also interaction patterns, buttons, like imagine how many different kind of uh, iterations you can work on to create a button. Like it's like button doesn't have to be boring. Button can elevate your design. Um, lists, icons, iconography, oh my god, like how much icons can inject the branding and make your product stand out. Really, like I cannot stress enough how important bra branding and design systems goes together. Of course, design system is also about making something systematic, making something well documented, well crafted and easy to use. And I think that is also a very interesting part for me where I can really just focus on that part and, you know, uh, zone out and get excited about the outcome. And also seeing how other designers use your design system for me, this is very interesting and I can learn a lot from that. So design systems aren't boring. You are making them boring. When you care about user experience, and I'm talking about typical UX experience and also visual uh, part of it, which I really strongly believe it's also user experience, and you push creative boundaries, people around you start to be excited about that. You present your solutions to your team and they start to realize how important it is to push, <laughs> to explore, to build solutions that are crafted to your product, not only copy of some other uh, big product that they thought that they want to do. Uh, and suddenly you see that Designers in your team are more excited about this kind of work and they also push and 
suddenly you realize that the product is more design driven than it was and developers are excited about building your products. They follow more thoughtfully your design guidelines and products start to be better built, prettier, but also more functional and just things work together. And I've noticed this in a few projects that I've been part of, uh, this shift uh, since I joined. And I think this is the one of the biggest drivers for me in my work, uh, to see how you as a single designer can transform a product area that you are working on. Why are you blinking? No, oh, it's really up to us designers to show people what is good design process, what is good design, what isn't good design. And it's really up to us if we will make people excited about our solutions or if we just, you know, won't care and produce something fast and shitty and just, you know, go home. Uh, yeah, make your rules, make your rules that makes you happy. If you hate some recurring meetings and you don't have any good input, just decline and communicate it with the team. Probably you really don't have to join. Use this time to learn new tools, to do things that makes you happy. Maybe you want to work on some kind of um, feature idea for, for the product that you are working on and, and you can present it to the team, maybe it will end up in a roadmap and you will be proud of a tool that you are building. So I share here some rules that worked for me, but I'm sure that there are rules that will work for you. Maybe you are passionate more about a different part of design process and that's fine. Just make your rules. Do not stay at a place that makes you unhappy. Uh, it sounds obvious because it is, but I think you have to hear it. If you are at the place that makes you unhappy and makes you drain out of energy, makes you frustrated, doesn't appreciate you, doesn't appreciate the effort that you put into projects, you have to just quit. Life is too short to waste it on shitty clients. I think I should tattoo it or something. No one's gonna change things for you. Things won't get better if you won't change them. This is something that I think maybe we are naive sometimes and believe that um, the company that you are staying at will change something. Finally, they will notice. No, they won't. And if your manager promised you something and for a very long time it's not happening, well, probably it's not gonna happen. So change your job. Okay, uh, my camera just died. So I think it's uh, time for me to stop telling you how to live your life. Uh, let me know if any of that was helpful for you and if you would like to know more. Uh, I made this video because I, uh, I talked to some of you who watch me and I felt that might be helpful for some of you. Um, but let me know if it wasn't. <laughs> so I will stop wasting your and my time on, on those. Yeah, all right. Uh, I will enjoy my day. By the way, it's, it's, um, it's Friday and now I'm working four days per week. So it's my off day. So that's great. Um, I'm starting to experiment a bit with working different hours and I must say that so far is good. So, <sighs> all right. Uh, if you're still here, write potato, like and subscribe to make uh, my ego grow. Um, I know it's already big but make it bigger so yeah uh, okay I'm, I'm i'm gonna finish have a good day or night or wherever
the time is that you are watching it and hydrate. Okay, bye bye. <laughs>